All right, uh, so today we're going to be talking about the um, score guess method in this word match class. I think it be, can be very helpful to sort of talk through the problem and visualize it and like write it out before you start attempting it in code. So, but basically in this problem, we have some sort of secret word. Um, here, that word is Mississippi, and then we're given some sort of guess um, that is not an empty string, and it's less than or equal to the length of that secret word, and we're trying to figure out how many occurrences we have of that guess in our magic word, and then we return some sort of value, um, and that value is the number of occurrences times the length of guess and then times the length of guess again. So um, yeah, let's sort of talk about it. So I've written out our secret word here, it's Mississippi. If we look at this first guess, which is just the letter I, how would we figure out how many I's there are in the word Mississippi? So um, you should be able to just sort of look at this word and say, okay, well, there's one, two, three, four, there's four I's. Um, so yeah, I found four occurrences of it. And um, our brains are able to do that relatively quickly, but what's happening here is we're sort of scanning through that entire word. And as soon as we find an I in our word, we say, okay, well that equals the string I, so we can add to an occurrence, right? So how are we able to do this? So we kind of look at this word letter by letter. So we look at the first letter, we say, is M an I? No, it's not. So we move on to the next letter. Is I an I? Yes, it is. So we add one to our occurrences and so on and so forth, right? So we go through that entire string comparing it to the letter I. So it's pretty simple for just the letter I, but let's say our, our guess gets a little bit more complicated. So now we're looking at our guess is ISS. It's not as easy where we're just comparing every single letter to I, like with the previous example. Now we're, we have to compare three consecutive characters, right? So um, what that means is starting from our first character, we're gonna want to look at the next two characters as well. So this substring MIS, does that equal ISS? No, it does not. So we move on to the next three characters. And now you might be tempted to look at, you know, if we were looking from index zero to two, you might be tempted to then look at the substring from three to five. And if you do that, you're going to get the wrong answer. And the reason why is because the substring from one to three is different than the substring from zero to two, right? So notice that substring starts with an I as opposed to the substring that starts at zero, which starts with an F. So we have to look at every substring starting at every index, right? So um, if you're looking, if you're thinking about this in a loop sense, right, we're repeating this process of checking if the substring equals our guess or not, you'll notice that we're not going to be incrementing our loop by the length of guess, we're just going to be incrementing it by one because every single index, we have another substring of whatever length of whatever guess length to look at, right? If this was our first substring that we're looking at, MIS, then the next one we would be looking at is uh, from one to three, which would be ISS, and we'd compare that to our guess. We'd say, does that equal it? Yes. So um, we would add one to our occurrences. Yeah, that's all fine and dandy, but how do we know where to stop? Let's say, just for example, I somehow reach this P here. Um, you might notice, okay, well, if I'm at this P, I only have two letters to compare to my guess, which is three letters. So we know that a, a word that is only two letters long will never equal a word that is three letters long. So what I'm saying here is we don't actually even need to to check this substring. If we're looking at the substring, the substring includes the end of the string, we know that we can stop checking if there are any more occurrences of that guess in there. Write out all the indices here, maybe we can figure out how we can tell when to stop, when we can stop our loop. Mississippi has 11 letters in it, um, our guess has three letters in it, and we know that we want to stop at the letter P. Is there a way that we can leverage the length of these two strings so that we know when to stop? Of course there is. So we can use the guess length, so in this case that length would be 11, and we can subtract the length of the guess, in this case is 3, to get 8. So we know that once we've reached the eighth index, that is the last substring that we need to look at before we run out of the substrings to look at. Because 
as I said, this won't ever be ISS. But what's also important to remember is that we want to include that index. If we say, for example, we we got to index eight um, and we're like, okay, well, we got to index eight. That means that we don't need to check the substring. That would be incorrect. There's still one more substring. So um, make sure you don't have any off by one errors here. We can do something similar for the next string as well. So it's length six. So 11 minus six equals five. So we know that once we get to index five, that is going to be the last substring of length six that we can look at within Mississippi. All right, so now let's get into the pseudocode of the score guess method, right? So uh, we're probably gonna want to initialize a variable that variable that holds the number of occurrences of the guess, right? And then we're gonna be incrementing that um, as we find more and more occurrences. So we're gonna want to loop over the loop over the secret word. We're going to want to check whether the substring at that index matches the guess. Um, if it does, we want to increment the occurrences variable, right? And then once we're done with that, we're going to want to return number of occurrences times the length of guess times the length of guess again, right? Because remember, the score calculation is the number of substring occurrences times the square of the length of guess, All right? So um, yeah, this is sort of like the pseudocode of what we just discussed when we went through the problem with the example of Mississippi. So let's go ahead and dive into the actual code now. So um, initializing a variable that holds the number of occurrences of the guess. Um, so this is probably going to be an int because we're returning an int. So int um, num, <coughs> let's call it a num oc, and we can initialize that to zero, all right? Okay, looping over the secret word. So remember what I said about how we can sort of stop a little bit early depending on the length of the guess. If, for example, the length of our guess is three letters long, we don't need to look at the index that is greater than the length of the secret word minus two, right? Um, because that will just be two letters or one letter or no letters at all, right? We still want to start at the first index of our string, right? But then we don't necessarily want to do guess.length here, or sorry, not guess.length, secret.length here um, for exactly the reasons that I pointed out. So we're gonna have something like int stopping point, um, and this is going to be equal to secret.length minus guess dot length. So uh, less than the stopping point. Actually, we want it to be less than or equal to because remember that if we're looking at M-I-S-S-I P-P-I, this would be the technical stopping point, but we also, we still want to look at the substring at that point. So we need to make this less than or equal to. All right, um, and then as I mentioned, we want to increment by one because we need to check the substring at the first index and then the substring at the second index and so on and so forth, okay? All right, so loop over the secret word. We've got our start and stopping points. <clears throat> Next, we need to check whether the substring at that index matches the guess, okay? So remember that these are string comparisons, so we don't want to be using equals equals, we want to be using dot equals here, okay? How do we get the substring at that index as well? Remember, you can use that handy dandy little cheat sheet. There is a substring method, so we can say we want to get secret dot substring. So what's our starting index? Well, our starting index we're keeping track of using i, remember? So um, we want to start at i, and then we want to look guess dot length characters forward, okay? So I plus guess dot length. So the whole point of us stopping early 
in parentheses, is that we don't want to get an index out of bounds error here, right? Because we're looking guess.length characters ahead. If that substring dot equals, we want to check if it will equal guess, which is what's being passed in that parameter. Okay, if it does, then we know that we found an occurrence of that guess in our secret word. So what we're going to do is we're going to say num occurrence plus plus, and that is about it for our for loop. Assuming our for loop works correctly, our bounds are right, we want to return the score, okay? So return num occurrences and then dot, oh, sorry, I think I forgot parentheses here. And then we want to say the length of the guess, so guess dot length, and then times guess dot length. That is the solution to score guess. As we always do, what we're gonna do is we're gonna check over our code to make sure it actually works. So let's go ahead and look at that second example where we got, we have the string a, 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 b, b. Okay, so uh, we're initializing num um, occurrences to zero. Our stopping point is going to be, okay, so what's secret.length? Secret.length is two, four, six. It's six minus, and then the guess is guess is um, let's skip the first uh, situation where it's just one letter and let's move on to this. Just make it a little bit more interesting. Okay, so six minus two equals four. So we know that once we reach the fourth index of our string, of our secret word, that is going to be the last substring that we're going to be looking at. Okay, so we're setting i equals zero, uh, which is less than four, our stopping point, or less than or equal to. So we want to see if the substring of that index matches our guess. The substring from zero to zero plus two, right? Guess that length is two. What does that equal? Well, that equals a a, okay? So we're gonna increment num occurrences to be one, awesome. Now we're gonna uh, increment our one. One is still less than or equal to four. Now what we're looking at is this substring, which would be one, three. Let me see if this will help actually. Okay, so I've sort of added the uh, indices to make it a little bit simpler to see. So uh, one to three, that substring is also AA, which equals our guess. So now num occurrences is two. All right, and moving on to the next i value now we're looking at two four two four is these two which is equal to our guess awesome so now num occurrences is three we move this up to three uh now we're looking at um three five um, 3, 5 is AB, which unfortunately does not match our guess of AA, so we don't increment num occurrences, we increment our I. Now we're looking at 4, 6, and now notice this is going to be our last run through the loop, um, and that is going to be this substring BB. BB does not match AA, we don't increment num occurrences, so um, what we're turning is 3 times the length of the guess is 2 times 2, which equals 12, which matches up with what we expected. Here's what it looks like if we get rid of all the pseudocode. Hopefully that helps you out on how to solve this score guess problem. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section and I will get to them. I hope you have an awesome day.